Did you see all those colors? If you guys want to see me make over this piece behind me and repaint it into my style with a bunch of color, stay tuned. Hey everybody, if you are new here, my name is Kristana. I am a furniture artist, so welcome to my YouTube channel. Please, if you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos I put out. I usually do a furniture tutorial every week, usually on Thursdays, but don't quote me on that because I'm a free spirit and I like to do it when I want to do it. So once a week, usually Thursdays, unless something else happens, I do have two small children and so you never know. But this week I'm going to show you guys how to repaint a piece. I understand that this is really pretty and, and whatever, but it's in my art room and I had made this a while ago for a friend, but it was too big for her area. And so I just kept it and put all my stuff in it. And I really want to just make it more me and in my art room. And if you guys have followed me for a while, I am super colorful. So I will be repainting this piece and we're going to make it into what I like. I realize it's probably not going to be everybody's style and that's okay. You can appreciate the artistry even if you don't like the colors that they use. So hopefully you will find something educational in this video. We will be going over how to repaint a piece that's already been painted and we're going to do some decoupage and blending and all that stuff and probably texture and I don't even know what I'm going to do. I put all those colors in the beginning. I don't even know if I'm going to use them all. I might, I might not, I don't know, but you have to stay tuned to see what I'm doing. So stay tuned and watch all the way. I want you to know that every time that I put a video out, at the very end, I always put the final product. So if you guys are like, what did she do? What did it look like? Stay till the end so that you can see the final product. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove all the hardware from this piece. Now I painted this piece before, so I know what kind of paints on it and I know how I prepped it. And so the only thing that I'm going to do is remove all the hardware. I'll remove all of the drawers, things like that. And I'm going to clean it really well with Dixie Belle's white lightning. And then I'm going to wipe it off with clean water and a clean rag to make sure I get all the residue off. But if you don't know what someone has done or what kind of paint is on there, one, you need to make sure you clean it really well. And if the paint job is decent, then you can do a scuff sand and usually paint over that. But if it is really awful, there's no way around it. You're probably going to have to strip it. So I would say that if you are just beginning to paint furniture, I would stick to things that were not painted first, especially that you didn't paint because you never know what you're painting over. But because I know what I'm painting over, and this is Dixie Belle that I painted with before, I know that I can clean it and I can just go right over that pre-existing finish. So that's what I did for this piece. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's new rice paper decoupage paper for the top three drawers. So this is really pretty and this is the the color or the name of it is called colorful floral with black and white. This is actually going to be available in a few weeks but I wanted a white base underneath there so the first thing that I did was paint the drawers all white with sawmill gravy and that way I didn't have any of that design coming through underneath. I didn't want to put the paper right over that design because the paper is white and it's thin so it ran the risk of showing that so I made sure that I had a solid white base to start with and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to fit it so there are thin little areas on the edge you need to cut those off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that area off and then I'm going to refit it again and butt it all up against the edges and then I'm going to use my finger and you'll see that here in a second. So I'm, I'm putting it up against the edges right here and then I'm going to use my finger because this is rice paper it creases really easily. So I'm going to use my finger go across on the bottom and I'm almost going to crease it with my fingernail. I'm going to go over it a few times and then you'll see once I flip it over you can see where the crease is and I'm going to cut along that line and then I'm going to be able to start my decoupage. Once 
Once I'm happy with the cut, I'm going to go ahead and take Dixie Belle's Satin Clear Coat. That's what I like to use when I decoupage. And I'm gonna put that a layer of that on top of the newly painted white. So that white is dry, okay? So I let it dry first, but I'm putting this Satin Clear Coat down first before I put the paper because it's going to act as almost a glue that has the paper that sticks the paper to the actual surface. And so I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to set that on top of it and I'm going to smooth it out with my hands. Now, you can make this really smooth if you want, but I wanted to I wanted to make it smooth, but I also wanted to have a few wrinkles just to add character, so I did that on purpose. But you can smooth it with your hand and I'm going to you'll see me smoothing it with the foam brush. So I smoothed it out quite a bit, but not too much that I didn't have the character of like the aged wrinkles on it. So I'm taking that and I'm going to smooth it out. And then once I'm happy with it being smoothed out, I'm going to take my satin clear coat and I'm going to put that over top of it to seal it in. This paper is designed to be a continuous pattern even if you have multiple sheets. So what I'm doing here is I'm butting up the other piece of paper to the design so that I can have a continuous pattern and I'm going to cut it, then I'm going to line it up and I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to put the satin clear coat down first, put it on there, and then put the satin clear coat over top of it and then that will allow me to have a continuous pattern. Just take your time with it and line it up perfectly so that way you don't see any problem with it and this this rice paper is so forgiving you can pull it up and you can really manipulate this paper quite a bit before you actually tear it so it's very beginner friendly i have this paper on all three of the drawers and I wanted to kind of give you guys a little inside of where I get inspiration from sometimes. So I set this on a 10 minute Tuesday, but I took my daughter to the dentist a few months ago and <laughs> this was a picture that was on the wall. My guess is that it was probably from, it's probably from a Disney movie, maybe something, I'm not sure. But the colors in this are amazing. Hold on, can you guys see it? I love the colors in this, and so that is my color inspiration. I think it's gonna go really nice with this. So now I just need to really figure out what colors I wanna do. But this is my inspiration. <laughs> A bird with the head cut off. A colorful bird. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna be really honest and transparent with you right now. I had the inspiration for this piece and I thought that it would go great and I thought the blue and the purples and whatever would blend really pretty, but obviously I was wrong. So I was wrong. And I just want you guys to know that people make mistakes and it's just paint and I, I understand that it's wasting paint, but if it does get messed up, it's not a big deal. So what I had done is did a base coat of all those colors first and I thought this is gonna look awesome, this is gonna blend really well. Okay, so the next part, no. It just looked dark and blah, blah, blah. So I call that my wrong turn number one. And then I went to go put pure ocean. So I covered that up and this is really cute. I had to show you guys this. <laughs> my son was playing cat. <laughs> but anyway, so I covered up the cobalt blue with a pink color and I tried again with just pure ocean. Again, wrong turn number two. Was not turning out the way I wanted to. So now at this point, I have i'm at my wits end but i'm gonna take all the blue off of the piece so 
There has been just a little bit of a hiccup in this and I was doing blue. So if you saw what I had just done, I had put some of the pure ocean in different places, but it really wasn't blending the way that I wanted it to. So I'm going to approach this from a different angle. What I'm going to do is I have put my Daisy, Florida orange, peony, and then there's some plum crazy right here. I'm going to put that all over the piece and I'm going to be blending that into the piece. And then I'm going to be almost doing kind of a dry brush blend to add some of the blues and the purples because the blues and the greenish and the purples, they don't quite blend like this into the colors seamlessly. We're going to do a dry brush blend on top. Don't worry. I'm going to show you. But the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to blend these together. I know it looks like a Mod Podge of madness right now, but it's going to all come together. I hope. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. There's no more blue on the piece. So I'm misting the area. And right now I'm going to go over with a second coat of Plum Crazy. So I'm using Plum Crazy, Peony, Florida Orange, and Colonel Mustard on the base of this piece. So that was Plum Crazy. And now I'm going to put some Peony on there. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a second coat, but I'm also kind of blending at the same time. So this is a little bit different of a blending than I did before. I do know that all these colors blend really well together. If I blend the yellow and the pink, I'm going to get an orange. If I put the yellow over top, it's going to lighten it. So I wasn't really, I'm not really too concerned with keeping the colors separate. So I'm taking the peony and I'm just going over different areas and you'll just see me. I'm going to take some Florida orange now and I'm going to go over the areas with Florida orange, but then I'm going to go into the peony. So just use a light hand, keep it misted. And when you're going into the other stuff with a light hand, it will, it, these colors are so close and they complement each other so well. They're not complementary colors. I mean that they're so close and they're in the same color family that they blend so beautifully that this is really is super easy colors to blend at first. So you can see that I'm layering over that Florida orange over top of the peony. And then I'm going to go in with my kernel mustard and I'm going to just lighten up different areas. So I do this on the entire thing. And once I'm happy with my blends with the actual brushes of the colors, then I take my clean, dry, neutral brush, just like always at the very end. And I missed it and I just smooth everything out, but there's not really anything else to say about this blend because it really is super easy. You could take that yellow and put it over the peony and blend it in and it's still going to look good. So this is really a great beginner blend and beginner colors to use because this really is easy and you can do circles, you can do your horizontal, you can do your vertical, you can do your diagonal. It's really just a, a nice and it's pretty too. This piece did need blue. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a cheap chip brush with my pure ocean. I'm going to mist the area and I'm almost doing kind of a color wash in 
the corners and things like that. So you're gonna see me do this. I'm gonna use the pure ocean and I'm gonna use the cobalt blue. I'm gonna miss the area first and I'm going to put the paint on there, kind of almost like a dry brush technique. I'm gonna mist it and just wipe away with my microfiber cloth until I'm happy with it. So that's what you'll see me do the next couple of clips. And then I'm also gonna layer some of the pure ocean in with the cobalt. It's, it's fairly easy and it's basically like I'm dry brushing, you know, kind of color washing, but adding those blues on there for dimension. And when the blues mix together, they almost make purple. So that really brought the piece all together. Next one, we're layering and we're gonna be wet distressing and showing that blue. So I'm doing pure ocean with a cheap chip brush. I want to have texture. I don't, my whole purpose of this is not to have a smooth finish. So you're gonna see me go in a bunch of different directions. And I'm just gonna place this pure ocean in a bunch of random spots. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over it with the colors that I used on the drawer fronts and I'm going to blend that in then once that's dry, so the pure ocean is gonna dry, I'm gonna put the colors that you see right here, I'm blending them right now, and then I'm gonna wait for that to dry, and then we are going to do our wet distress, and that will show the blue coming through those colors. Once the paint is dry, I'm gonna take my mister bottle and I'm gonna mist the area and I'm gonna take a microfiber cloth and I'm going to take, 
take the microfiber cloth and wipe across the area. And this is what is known as wet distressing. So this is going to allow that blue to show through all those reds and it's really gonna just come together. I'm gonna to show you the top as well and I'm going to mist it and then just take my rag and I'm going to rub across it and it's gonna expose, I'm gonna go in circles and it's gonna expose that blue that's underneath and it's just gonna look really cool. Once everything has dried and it's sat for a few hours, I'm gonna use my Easy Peasy Spray Wax and I'm going to spray it all over the piece and rub it in with a cloth. And this is going to do a final seal of my piece before I put my hardware back on. This hardware was black, kind of boring. So I took Dixie Belle's chameleon wax and lilac and their gilding wax and gold. And I just did kind of a dry brush over top of it. This gilding wax and the chameleon wax are oil-based. So once they dry, they will be permanent. So it's not gonna rub off of this hardware as long as you give it ample time. So take, give it a few days before you start using it and then let it, that'll allow it to dry and cure and then it'll become permanent. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Remember that everything I use will always be in the description below. And the decoupage paper will be available in a few weeks, so you'll wanna check back for a link for that. But this was a lot of fun, and I had a lot of fun doing it because I was doing a lot of neutrals, so this kinda of set my soul a little bit more free. <laughs> so, if you guys are not subscribed, make sure you're subscribing and stay on here so that you can see a lot of really pretty staged pictures of my brand new piece. Think about me one more time before you go. I've been feeling this way for far too long